We're on a path to higher rates, all the while geopolitical tensions are rising in response to the Russia-Ukraine conflict. Joining us now to share his macro views and explain why gold could do well in this environment is Sprott market strategist Paul Wong. First, Paul, how is the Russia-Ukraine conflict impacting markets, and has this changed the course of monetary policy? Well, the, the Russian-Ukraine situation conflict is probably one of the biggest macro drivers we had in the marketplace over the last few years. You know, we had a number of them. The last one of this magnitude was probably the, you know, the COVID crisis back in March of 2020. And today, uh, the Russian-Ukrainian crisis is still in its early days. It's still the risk factors are, are spreading out. There is a huge impact uh, probably on inflationary outlook, on growth outlook, and it's starting to, again, morph and evolve. Uh, commodity markets are under stress. The funding markets are under stress. We can see that through the strength of the U.S. dollar. Uh, we can see a number of things going on that uh, all points towards a more challenging market going forward. Do you think the Fed is behind the curve, potentially tightening into a slowing economic backdrop? Uh, well, the market's certainly pricing that in. Uh, what we're seeing now is um, since the Fed announced that uh, they were on a path of towards higher rates, we can see the yield curve has been flattening steadily uh, ever since. And today, the, the, the 10 2 yield curve is sitting around 25 beeps. So we're very close to uh, flattening to inversion. Parts of the curve has already inverted. And what we're seeing now, we're seeing other, we're definitely seeing signs of stagflation uh, being priced into the market. Uh, break evens are, are heading higher to uh, new, new highs. So that's indicating that inflation expectations are rising. Real yields are back towards roughly about minus 1% right now. Again, indicating a slowdown. Higher inflation, slowdown. Uh, that's, that's a stagflation picture. And it is building. Um, the, the pressure we're seeing in, in the commodities market is extremely volatile in the last few days. A lot, most indication shows that it will probably head higher uh, on supply shortages, and, and that's mostly due to uh, the sanctions in Russia. Russia is the world's largest commodity producer of almost everything. Um, it is roughly the size of Saudi Arabia in terms of oil production, so their export market is significant. The, the amount of barrels that are affected right now Best guess is somewhere in the three to five million barrels are, are already impacted. What we're seeing is we're seeing a lot of self-sanctioning that's going on right now. Even though the U.S. and that has just announced that they will sanction import oil, but what you're seeing is that you're seeing a lot, lots of commodity users, providers of transportation, uh, financial facilities. They're all heading. They were already heading towards self-sanction. So. It, there is almost a semi de facto oil embargo going on right now. And the pressures will build, you know, especially as the U.S. head towards uh, driving season in May, where demand pull becomes much higher for, for gasoline, uh, for crude oil and refined product demand. Now, what are your expectations for real yields, interest rates and inflation going forward? Uh, real yields, uh, the best guess is that it's uh, range bound. Um, Current levels minus 1%, it basically, it, it fights the Fed's ability to lower inflation. So low negative reals basically loosens financial conditions. So that's a, that's a bit of a headwind towards the Fed trying to try to push down inflationary pressures. And if real rates rise too quickly, too high, then that affects the outlook for growth and growth expectations. So it's a, it's a bit of a narrow window with, where the threat Sorry, where the Fed needs to thread the needle, so to speak. Nominal yields, uh, it looks like it's probably heading higher. Uh, we can see there's tremendous pressure on, on the uh, inflationary front currently. And with a you know, seemingly day by day, an increasing uh, stagflationary pressure as well. Uh, Europe is certainly feeling stagflation because of its dependency on, on Russian um, energy exports. 
And as for inflation, currently right now, the late the last inflation data still shows inflation is still broadening out, still increasing. Uh, there is no signs of it uh, abating anytime soon. And with with the you know across the board increase across almost all commodities, energy, food especially, it's hard to see inflation abating uh, within the next few months until you reach the point where you have demand destruction, which basically translates to recession. And uh, stagflation as well, potentially. Um, yeah. Finally, Paul, how do you see a more hawkish Fed impacting the precious metals market? Uh, less so because there's greater pressures elsewhere. Uh, prior to Russia-Ukraine, you know, the gold market had started shaking off the um, the uh, the hawkish Fed rhetoric uh, early in early 2022. Probably we probably sorry, what year is it? It's COVID. Um, sorry, early 2021. Uh, we saw probably the maximum pressure on gold from from Fed rate hike expectations, and somewhere around September uh, through November. Gold basically started decoupling away from the, the Fed hawkish talk, and it started basically. You can see the correlations were starting to break down, and gold was starting to price other things. And mostly, I believe it's probably the safe haven aspect. As the Fed apparently, the market again was pricing the Fed was hiking into a slowdown, and there would be greater uh, stress in the marketplaces going forward. Uh, Russia Ukraine situation basically just amplified that that move. Mm -hmm. Certainly. Well, a lot going on in the world right now. Paul, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you very much. Thank you for having me. And thank you for watching. Once again, I was joined by Sprott Market Strategist Paul Wong. I'm Jenna Dagenhart with Asset TV.